You know, um, I look at it as any great myth or any great story or any great, you know, Arthurian tale. It's it's a flawed character or someone that has a, an internal conflict, someone that's both the yin and yang, um, empathetic, cries over puppies, misses his wife, wants to be normal, but has an amazing skill set or has an edge to him. As soft as he can be, he can be twice as hard. Um, he also lives by a code, um, and he also lives through the skin of his teeth, meaning John Wick is not the fastest, he's not the best, he's not, but he has sheer will and determination. He has an internal strength that all of us find heroic in a certain way. That and I think the wish fulfillment of, <laughs> you know, a hidden world, a mythological world that, you know, we always hope is out there, but you can't. Everyone would love to stumble into some side alley in New York and stumble into a mythical small yay that you can buy firearms from, I think. Um, I think that's appealing and it's um, maybe not original in conception, but original in execution. Um, meaning, again, the type of a small yeah that deals with this, uh, an auto body shop that soups up high-speed cars, you know, a special hotel, which is technically a haven for, uh, you know, the industry that they were behind. Uh, you know, just interesting wish fulfillment world. I think the original thought, which came back from a lot of the creative ent entities when we started dealing with John Wick 2 or started conceptualizing it was plot, 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 plot. Let's get him to save here and he'll go here and he'll do this. And we're like, wait, 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 we just couldn't. It kept getting more and more and we actually felt it becoming an action movie, becoming, becoming not losing the DNA, as you say. Um, and then we're just like, uh, one day Keanu had said something to me and it just clicked. It's like, what, what are we doing? We don't really, it's not about, it's a day in the life of John Wick. That's what it is. It's not external forces imploding on him, it's him exploding on external forces. So like, just stay with the guy. We, we love the guy. Like, and how we kept the DNA was like, let's not worry about, you know, the plot and all the stuff. John has a debt. John needs to pay the debt. But it's a day in the life of John Wick. The first movie calls the second movie. It is his karmic payback. He promised something. Now he has to deliver. That's really what it's about. And if he wasn't what he was in the first movie, we wouldn't be here. So we just kind of stayed with the guy and stayed true to John Wick. And through that, the plot became very, very obvious to us. For me, having done so many different kinds of action sequences over the years, I like the before and after. What's the setup and what's the payoff? Um, an example would be like, look, we love all the cat. I love the rock concert. I love the opera. I love the catacombs. I love all that stuff. Um, I love the opening car chase. I like panning off Buster Keaton coming down and crashing the motorcycle and doing that. The payoff to the first one is just Peter Stormare giving you the look and going, oh, okay, John Wick. The payoff after the catacombs and all that is Common hitting with the car. And the payoff after Common and him fight is them going through the window and having Franco Nero go, gentlemen. Content, go have go have a drink at the bar. It's the it's the comic, ah, oh, like what what happens after all that? You know, after all this big, he's gonna kill guys with pencils and guns and all this stuff, and then the sumo guy still doesn't. He shoots the sumo guy in the head the last. Like I like those little beats of oh my god, oh my god, ah, and boom, oh. uh, so that's the fun part for me. First and foremost, I'd love to be considered an entertaining director. So I want you to have fun. I want you to realize that the movie was made to have fun. Um, I hope they take away the care and love that the crew put into it. Like, it, it's not easy to shoot the way we did. Big wide shots, long takes, um, the detail involved in the action and the overall scenes of just, we tried to make an artsy action film, a pretty action film, something that you can have good color, you can have great sound, you can have cool music, you can have great effects, you can have an actor that does great action, you know, for a price. Um, and it just really comes up, a good movie can be made with care. Hey, Vali here. Well, if you are like me and love movies, stick around as I have some awesome movie trivia for you. For its American release, the first 20 minutes of train spotting had to be redubbed to make the Scottish accents more intelligible. Whilst filming The Hunger Games, Jennifer Lawrence accidentally kicked co-star Josh Hutcherson in the head, knocking him out cold and giving him a concussion. Jennifer. Benedict Cumberbatch recorded his screen test for Star Trek Into Darkness at his best friend's kitchen using an iPhone. Hmm. Bill Murray was originally considered for the role of Han Solo in Star Wars. Independence Day was shot in just 72 days. The scene in the breakfast club in which all the characters sit in a circle on the floor of the library and tell stories about why they were in detention was not scripted. Director Hughes told them all to ad-lib. 
So, how many pieces of movie trivia did you know? Let me know in the comments below. Keep up to date with all the latest releases by subscribing to our channel and checking the notification bell. See you next time!